Hello everyone, yesterday we had a patch in Marvel Snap that shook up the meta a, a decent amount. And between when that patch went live and then the featured location kicked in, we had about 12 hours to gather data as far as what the meta or the early meta was gonna look like. Now, this is very heavily leaned towards bounce because everybody got Kitty Pride for free and Kitty Pride slots very well into a bounce style deck. But let, <laughs> let me just show you what we're looking at and what we're gonna be running today. So looking at the data that we have, and this is on untapped.gg. If you don't have their tracker, if you wanna check the site out, a link is in my description below. <laughs> but we have Galactus. Right now we're looking at just the latest patch, so not including the current location. We're looking at players that are collection level 3000 or higher. And then right now it's set to ranks 80 through 100. 80 through 100, Galactus is sitting at the top slot, which is scary. Galactus being at number one in an average cubes gained ever is just so scary because it's such an oppressive deck that you want it to be middle ground. I'm okay if Galactus sits comfortably at low B, high C tier, but being an A tier is very scary. And so if we narrow this down to 80 through 99 rank, Galactus is still number one. It drops off a little bit between the ranks of 80 to 89, going down, but it's still within a pretty close margin of that Sarah Surfer deck. We scale that back up, looking at 90 through 99, Galactus is number one, uh, including the infinite players, still number one, and then just the infinite players, so the 100 plus players, and it still has a pretty sizable lead. Now this is incredibly early. This doesn't mean that Galactus is just broken, but we are gonna dive into a Galactus build. It got a little bit of a buff, just ever so slightly. In the uncertain meta state, it does have some strength because it is a very consistent, very linear line. And I know I covered one recently, but with the release of Iron Lad, he helps increase that consistency and just everything goes towards making sure you have a consistent way to drop that power. Now there's still several ways you can build Galactus. You can build a more flexible or more turn six style Galactus deck. If you don't have Jeff and Iron Lad, I would honestly suggest that instead. One that runs Shuri, Taskmaster, Nimrod, Doc Ock, to give you those multiple play lines to drain the opponent's resources, to pump out a lot of power, and you're not relying so heavily on the Galactus play. You do still rely on it pretty heavily, but not to such a heavy degree. Now, if you're looking for just an all out consistent, I want to play Galactus and that is what I want to do. I don't really want to think about the multiple play lines. Then this version is going to be a little bit better for you and both operate very consistently. I believe the turn six one with the Nimrod has about 57% win rate for the most part. And then this version will creep a little bit closer to 60% in a lot of cases. Now, depending on the sample size that could range anywhere from like 53 up through 60, but in my experience, I've maintained over a 60% win rate with a Galactus deck, which is just so unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> it's so unfortunate, it really is. And so if, as far as the deck goes, it's very straightforward. You want to curve your cards earlier, your Yondu, your Jeff, your Electro, your Wave, into either a Doc Ock on four. If you hit your Electro line, a Doc Ock on four, a Galactus on five is going to be Huge. You drain them of those counterplays and then you get a big buffed up null, a hugely discounted death, and just overall it gives you so much flexibility. If you don't hit the Electro, doing something like Wave into an early Galactus, so a Galactus on turn 4 into a Spider-Man on turn 5 is damn near unstoppable. And then if they happen to get just a tiny bit more power than you get on the board, or if they Spider-Man lock you as well, we have the Jeff to try to play a little bit more power into that location. And then with Iron Lad, Iron Lad serves that purpose of towards the end of the game, we typically have three to four cards left in our deck. With Chavez starting at the bottom, as long as we don't have something shuffled in, Iron Lad is always going to give us one of those additional or last remaining two or three cards. And so we can use this to more consistently dig for a Doc Ock, dig for a Spider-Man, dig for Galactus sometimes. Just a lot of ways that Iron Lad can serve to kind of give you a last route, last choice, Hail Mary play to try to get something of value. I know that a Galactus list is not well received, not well looked at, but it is incredibly consistent and it just continues to get more and more consistent over time. And I think that says more of a problem for the card itself or for the archetype itself rather than the deck. But I do always want to showcase the decks that are performing incredibly well. And this one is a standout list right now, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so first up we have Paranoid. So Bifrost is going to push all of the cards over one direction. 
which might not be terrible depending on what the rest of our draw looks like. I'm going to go ahead and play Yondu into the last location. We're going to hope that the middle location is not Malloy's. So our Yondu destroys their, their Ronin. Uh, I do know a lot of people do enjoy trying to make Ronin work. I know Dara is a huge uh, Ronin, like a, a huge Ronin supporter. I just, I've never, I've never seen it myself. Uh, I just can't, I can't get behind Ronin. Some games he'll be great, but I just don't find him as consistent as something else. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm, maybe I'm wrong. All right, we're going to go ahead and do Electro. Uh, Sakar is going to pull a random card here. Unfortunately, we don't have Iron Lad or Doc Ock or Galactus. Uh, I guess maybe fortunately we do have, we don't have Galactus. So it pulls into our death. It pulls into their Maximus. So we get some pretty, um, it's pretty, we get some resources. Uh, so what we can do now is we can do a Doc Ock. We could do a Doc Ock to pull the rest of their three cost cards out of their hand, but I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to do an Iron Lad. We're going to do an Iron Lad. Maybe we copy Galactus. Maybe maybe we get Wave. Um, either way, we know it's not going to hit Chavez, so we have a 50-50 chance here. All right. The uh, <laughs> Paranoid did not want to uh, let us see if we were going to get the top deck or not. We're going to go ahead and take the one cube. I expect that to be pretty common with a Galactus list. Let's go ahead and take it and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Retsudo. Um, the first location is Murder World, which isn't bad. We're going to be able to place our Electro there. Their first card is a zero, so it looked cool. Into Milano, uh, none of, of all things. Milano. Let's go ahead and play Jeff. Um, next turn, I think we probably go with Electro. And then on turn four, I say probably a Doc Ock would potentially be our, our line. We are going to be able to make sure that this location does get itself cleared up. So let's go with the Electro. It's going to destroy itself. We'll be, we'll be able to ramp into draining their resources. Now, I assume they're going to have some really big, really powerful cards. And this version of Galactus may not be the best for like a competitive standpoint, but as far as climbing on the ladder, I think it's the most consistent way to play it, giving yourself the most consistent way to draw your Galactus, your Null, being able to being able to destroy some of their cards with Shang-Chi. You don't need the flexibility all the time. Now, a flexible play path, if you want to see a more flexible Galactus list, I'll leave a link to the last Galactus deck that I covered, which is much more flexible, but it has so many viable lines that it's typically that it's typically really, really strong. So they <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so they <laughs> oh, man. Well, so they can't play into the Onslaught Citadel anymore uh, because they have their Ebony Maw there. They can't they can't play for it. I think we're going to go, we could go something like Yondu and Iron Lad, but we don't know necessarily what that's going to pull just yet. I think we wait a turn, see if we get Galactus. If we get Galactus, we can play it into this lane on turn, on turn five, and then on turn six, we should be able to hold it down. We're going to go with the uh, Doc Ock into the left lane. I assume they play for Milano. I think we can win the Onslaught Citadel, but we don't know for sure. So let's go ahead and play the Doc Ock into Murder World. Enchantress is big, okay. And then let's pull the rest of their resources. I, I assume they're big cards like Typhoid Mary, Arrow is big, and uh, Gamora is also big. Wow, some big powerhouse resources coming down. Now we have the one out of three for Iron Lad to flip into what we would want it to flip into here. If it does, do can we still win? I don't know. We would have to play two cards to bounce it their way and then bounce it the Titania back to make sure that we won this location. We're actually going to hold our Yondu here. We're going to hold him for the last turn of the game. We do have the extra energy, so we should be able to make it happen. Let's see what we pull into. The Red Skull in Milano is big. Iron Lad, if that's Galactus, huge. If it's Null, that should be okay as well, because Null is, the <laughs> Null is an ongoing card. We don't have to fight for this location anymore. All we have to do is win one of the other two. We don't have initiative here, so we can do something, something pretty simple, like maybe this. Ah, uh, do we even do we even do Yondu? Or maybe it's just Wave. Maybe it's just a Wave play. Wave is one extra power. I don't think we'll need it because we're going to take out their Gamora. But we are going to go ahead and send this. This is a Galactus deck, but we're going to find a way to win outside of Galactus, courtesy of the Iron Lad. 
We're not going to go Yondu. I think this lane is fine. If we were worried about this location, then I would do the Yondu to make sure we buffed up our Iron Lad a little bit further. And so they have the Doctor Doom to go wide, but the Shang-Chi is going to make sure that we buff up our Iron Lad further. And uh, the, uh, the Jeff and the one extra point actually does turn out to be what gives us the lead in Murder World. We would have held down the point differential because Yondu would have destroyed something. But nonetheless, it is nice that we won two lanes. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have the Snap God. First location is Westview. We're going to go ahead and skip here. Um, we have Jeff. Playing into the Sandbar becomes very tough for both, for almost any deck. We do have Jeff that's able to play for it, so I'm going to go ahead and put that there just as a tempo or initiative grabber, but it looks like they have something very similar up their sleeve. I guess let's go ahead and go wave... Go ahead and go wave into Westview just in case that turns into something that's incredibly restrictive. The bad thing is we don't have a good follow-up for the Westview line. Um, no matter what we play, it's not you. Sinister, Sinister London's pretty cool. Sinister London's pretty cool. If we're able to get a Shang-Chi to destroy any of their cards, um, then we can, we can do some pretty big things. Maybe we do Iron Lad. See if it copies... if it copies Doc Ock. Not a bad shot. We're going to go ahead and lock in the, the Iron Lad. They have a Magneto, which is pretty big. It moves the uh, Green Goblin around, but it also moves Wave out, so we have an additional space in the Sinister London to play some additional cards. Magneto is huge here, but we are going to be able to do a Shang-Chi pretty early. Um, our Yondu gets... Our Yondu takes out their Shang-Chi. And so now we can do Shang-Chi plus Yandu to take out take out this Magneto. Do we try to see if maybe we can take out two Magnetos? Yeah. And then on the last turn, we'll have our Null to lean in on. We know that they don't have Shang-Chi, so we should be perfectly fine here. We, of course, are not going to be able to go the Galactus route this game. But that's okay. I don't think we need to. Now, I'm... Okay, Polaris has to pull the Jeff. That is the only thing that's revealed that would be able to hit that. And unfortunately, Jeff goes back into Sandbar. And so we're unable to swing and take out the Magneto. But they use a Polaris, a Miles Morales. So I'm thinking this is probably like the Hawk deck or the Stature deck or something similar. And we have a massive, massive 21 power Null that I don't think they're going to be able to overpower regardless of what they play here. So we're gonna go ahead and lock this in. This is a, this is the second game where Galactus is not was nowhere to be found, but I think we're able to find a way to win nonetheless. They don't have Shang Chi. Enchanters could be detrimental, but uh, I don't think they have that either. And so the Captain Marvel can move. One of them can move to try and find a way to win, but it's not gonna be close enough in any of the lanes for that to be able to find a way to overcome the huge null. Having four Yondus was so clutch and being able to take out the one magneto was really was really beneficial as well we will go ahead and take the two cubes let's jump over into the next one all right next up we have nova quest the first location being los diablos base but our opening hand is beautiful we have the electro which is in my opinion the better ramp component um, unless you have something like galactus in spider-man instead um, but we have Electro. We're going to be able to do a Doc Ock on four. We can do a Galactus on five. And uh, that will help us get a bigger Null, get a really cheap death, and make sure that they don't have those counter resources to hopefully, hopefully to not block our Galactus from coming down. So they have the Wolverine. Ooh. They could be running a Destruction deck as well. Which is kind of scary, I guess. Uh, but let's go ahead and go with the... Uh, Let's go ahead and go with the Electro into Fisk Tower. We'll go with Doc Ock into Fisk Tower. Um, I want to, well, I was wanting to try and stop the Wolverine from getting destroyed very many times. And so if we could play Galactus into the lane that Wolverine already was placed in, even better. Uh, but unfortunately, we did not. So uh, Fisk Tower gets destroyed. If this stays here after this turn, then it'll turn into a symbiote. And then once it gets destroyed, it won't bounce around, which is probably the best thing we could ask for or hope. 
Let's go with the Doc Ock. We're going to drain them of, mm, looks like all of their remaining resources. So they do have the Titania plus the Venom coming down, which is still perfectly fine. <clears throat> um, that puts it within Shang-Chi range, or we can do Galactus into this left lane, um, and they don't have any resources to lean in on. The death into the Null, into the Carnage. Ugh, that is uh, so unfortunate. And so now ooh, we don't have we don't have our Null, which is scary. We also don't have our Shang-Chi. Okay, but they do retreat, knowing that it is very likely that we have those big resources to lean in on. And so, <laughs> and so we will absolutely take the two cubes. That is why we snapped early and aggressively. Let's go ahead and take it, jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Russell Lulu, I think, uh, the goodest of boys. The first location is Oscorp Tower. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and snap into it. We have Electro, we're gonna send them Electro. And then they're only gonna be able to play one card per turn. So even if we don't get the Galactus line, I think this gives us a lot of benefit. Um, and a lot of advantage. We have Yondu. Let's let's do Yondu. I'm gonna do Yondu into Warrior Falls, just, just for giggles. Morbius comes down. Um, if it gets too large, then we can kill it with Shang Chi. Otherwise, it gets a little bit dicey. Uh, ooh, wow! Kamar Taj is huge for him, and a lot of times a discard deck doesn't mind only playing one card per turn. Oof. Okay, we do have our Shang-Chi, but we don't really have much else to go on here. So we know if they discard their swarm, oh, beautiful. Um, they can no longer freely play their swarms, and so it makes it a little bit more difficult. They can use it as a way to buff up their Morbius, but they can't use it as a way to flood the board or flood the locations. All right, so let's do... Let's do Jeff. We could do Spider-Man. Uh, we could do Shang-Chi, but I want to save those because we are going to be able to do our Galactus on turn five. Ooh, and they stack both Morbius and Dracula into the same lane. Very, very, very bold. Let's go ahead and do our Galactus. Uh, Oscorp Tower is the prime prime idea, prime location for it. They do use a MODOK. So let's see what they discard here. Apocalypse is big. Um, oof. The swarms are big. The, okay, so the Apocalypse is going to be, what, 12 power because they discarded it once? I'm surprised they didn't split the Dracula and play MODOK where they... somewhere else. All right, so they have the lead, they have initiative, so we're going to be able to... That's spicy. If they don't play the Apocalypse, so they, they should, they should absolutely play the Apocalypse. That's the correct play, that's the most power. Uh, but if they played a Swarm... Nah, if they played a Swarm, we'd be fine. They can only play one card, and so I assume the Apocalypse comes down. We're going to use Shang-Chi to destroy it, and then the death helps us swing the lane in our favor otherwise. And so we will swing the four cubes, and that is kind of where Galactus kind of steals some things. Whenever you don't properly anticipate what that last turn play is going to be, that is where you're going to gain your most cubes as a Galactus player. I, for one, lose four and eight cube games against Galactus very frequently thinking that, no, nah, I, I know what you're going to do. I can counter it, and then they do something slightly different. So let's go ahead and take the four cubes. Let's jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have uh, Gyan, Gyandric. Gyandric. The first location is Altar of Death. The second one is Murder World. This is just a destroy-heavy game. My goodness. Um, and so we, we're going to get some benefit from those locations. The third one turns into Milano. We're going to want to be able to do Galactus early. I kind of like the idea of being able to do a Doc Ock, but at the same time, um, if we held on to our wave and did and did Galactus on five, we're going to have to play it into Milano. So to be able to avoid that, we would have to play it somewhere else earlier. So let's go ahead and play the Galactus into Murder World. It's a little bit too telltale. It's a little bit earlier than what I like, especially for not having Spider-Man in our opening hand. But it is, honestly, it, it is what it is. If we don't draw Spider-Man next turn, we have the Hail Mary of Iron Lad to be able to give us that additional chance to potentially pull into it. <laughs> they use Leader, and so they, <laughs> they copy our Galactus. And so we're going to get to see him trigger two times in a row. Uh, super unfortunate. But it is, it is what it is. 
We could do we could do a Doc Ock and try to drain them of those big resources. And then that would be able to and that would allow us to do like a death on this next turn. We could do a Shang-Chi to swing any of those big cards. Or we could hope for something good with our with our Iron Lad. We have two decent pulls. So Iron Lad could either hit Spider-Man or it could hit Yondu. Either one would be pretty promising. You gotta you gotta be confident with the Galactus. So we're gonna snap into this. We're gonna play the Doc Ock. Uh, we're not going to play the Doc Ock. We're going to snap into it, force the retreat, and then now we are going to go ahead and jump over into the next. All right, next up we have Mr. Moore. Uh, the first location being Tinker's Workshop gives us extra energy. We do get waves, so we can always Galactus on four if we want to, depending on what the locations turn out to be. Um, so using Galactus on five is not going to be ideal, so like something, so something like an Electro Ramp isn't as beneficial as it would be otherwise because because milano is going to force us into playing it only in to that location all right let's do a wave that's going to unfortunately gonna give them a lot of information i think uh, they have the goose so i think they probably have some kind of wave restriction in the game as well but uh we have our wave the only thing that they could do here to stop us only thing they can do here to stop us is a Cosmo. Victory. All right, next up we have Goose Fraba. Uh, the first location is Cloning Vats. And so maybe that encourages them to play there early, consistently. And maybe they put a little bit too much power out on the board. Maybe we can get uh, a bigger Knoll in the process, a cheaper death in the process. They have Time Stone, which is going to be pretty big. Milano, unfortunately, is not what we wanted to see. Uh, not a fan of seeing Milano. It is the featured location right now, but I, it's it's not great for a Galactus deck in general. Um, just because it is so restrictive on how and when you can play your Galactus, it almost forces you to play it early in most games. So Kamar Taj comes down. That's not terrible for us. Not great, but it's not terrible. Let's do Wave. We'll do Galactus. <laughs> Let's do wave. We'll do Galactus on four. We'll follow that up with a Doc Ock in Kamartage to try to cap out their location. If we get any big cards, we'll be able to use Shang-Chi. Now, if they have restrictive measures that really stop us from being able to play for Kamartage, maybe at that point we have to run the Viper. The Viper's big. The Viper's really, really big. So what if we did something like... What if we did something like uh, Doc Ock? So this looks like a clog style deck. It, it looks telltale of being a clog deck. What if we did Doc Ock here? Next turn, maybe we get to do an Iron Lad. Maybe we do a Spider-Man in one of these other two lanes. We can use Yondu on the last turn. Maybe Shang-Chi plus Yondu uh, to find a way to position ourselves in the best way to win. Now the Viper, the double Viper was big. The double Viper was so clutch. Uh, making sure that we couldn't do a Galactus. But hopefully we can find a way to maneuver outside of it. It could be dropping a Debris, which would be a double trigger. Luckily, we have Jeff that would be able to move out of that Dream Dimension location. And so the Professor X lock, very, very interesting. They have one turn to play for Milano. We can put more resources into this lane with Jeff. We do get our Spider-Man. So we're going to go ahead and lock in the Dream Dimension so that they can't play on the final turn. So a Galactus deck very quickly turned into a lane lockdown with this Milano location. Again, not a fan of the Milano location, but as far as a lockdown or lane control style archetype, I think it's probably pretty promising, honestly. So the Power Stone comes down, the Soul Stone comes down. They are unable to drop a buff card, a Blue Marvel, a Spectrum. They're unable to do any of that on the final turn. And so we are able to get the two cubes, not your ideal Galactus line but we will still take it. 